You bought an Ionic 5 because the fast charging curve looked insane on the brochure. 18 minutes, 10 to 80 percent, coffee isn't ready and the car's done. But there's always a little voice in the back of your head. If I keep doing this, am I slowly murdering my battery? In this video, we are going to talk to that voice. We are going to take the Ionic 5's fast charging superpower and flip it over to see the downside and the protections and the long-term consequences. By the end, you'll know when fast charging is totally fine when it's quietly chewing into your battery's life and what simple habits actually make a difference over 5 to 10 years of ownership. I'm going to keep this in plain language, no exam style equations, but we are going to think like engineers for a few minutes and translate that into real world rules you can actually use. Hello everyone, I'm Shayan, an engineer specializing in electric vehicle development. Why the Ionic 5's fast charging is such a big deal? Let's start with the why Ionic 5 even makes people nervous in the first place. This car is built on Hyundai's eGMP platform, which runs an 800 volt architecture. Most normal EVs are effectively 400 volt systems. Higher voltage doesn't magically create energy, but it does let you move the same power with less current, which means less heat, thinner cables, and more efficient fast charging. On a good ultra fast charger, in the right conditions, an Ionic 5 can pull in the ballpark of 220 to 230 kilowatts for a chunk of the session. That's like force feeding the packs uh, a whole home's worth of power times 10. You see those YouTube charging curves where it rockets up at the low state of charge, sits at high plateau, and then rolls off as it's near 80%. That's not marketing fluff. When conditions are right, the Ionic 5 is one of the fastest charging mass market EVs on the road. And that's exactly why people worry. If I'm jamming this much power into the battery, surely this thing will be toast in a few years. To answer that, we need to zoom in on what's physically happening during a fast charging and what actually hurts lithium ion cells over time. Inside your Ionic 5's pack, you don't have one big battery. You have hundreds of little cells grouped into modules and then into the full pack. Think of it like a bunch of tiny water tanks plumped together. During a DC fast charge, the charger is pushing current straight into that high voltage pack. At low state of charge, say 10 to 30%, the cells are hungry, their voltage is lower, and the chemical reactions that store lithium ions are in a sweet spot. The BMS lets a lot of current flow because the internal resistance is relatively low and the risk of damage is small. As long as temperature is under control. This is why you see those crazy high kilowatt numbers early in the session. As you climb toward the middle, 30 to 60%, the pack is still pretty happy, but voltage is creeping up and the cells are starting to fill up. The BMS begins to watch temperature, voltage, and cell balance more tightly. If the pack is well conditioned, meaning it's warm but not too hot, the car will hold a high power plateau here. This is the hero part of the curve that Hyundai likes to show in the marketing. Once you push above 60 or 70%, chemistry reality starts to bite. The closer you get to full, the less room there is in the electrode structure for lithium to slip in clear. Cleanly. The BMS starts pulling current down to avoid overvoltage on any single cell and stop temperature from climbing too high. To you at the charger, this feels like the car slowing down. Under the hood, it's packed saying, okay, we have had our fun, now let's not blow off anything. Near the very top, 80 to 100%, current is much, much lower. The car is essentially topping off and tidying up. This is where the cell balancing happens, where slightly higher voltage groups get gently bled down so the pack is more even. It's slow, but it's kind of slow that helps long-term health. So if the car is this smart, what's the problem? Why do people still talk about fast charging killing batteries? What actually kills lithium ion batteries over time? Lithium ion cells don't have a built-in timer that says, I die after eight years. They age because of stress. Fast charging is just one type of that stress. The three big killers you should keep in your head are high temperatures, high voltage, and high current, especially combined. High temperature is like running your car with the heater stuck on the full blast. The warmer the cell, 
the faster the side reaction at the electrode surface. These side reactions slowly thicken the SEI layer, the protective film inside the cell, and that eats into capacity and raises internal resistance. More resistance means more heat next time. It's a slow positive feedback loop you don't want. High voltage is what happens when you spend a lot of time near 100% state of charge. When the voltage is high, the cell is chemically stretched. Think of it like over inflating a balloon. It might be fine at the first few times, but if you leave it that way all the time, it gets tired. The upper 10 to 15% of the battery's state of charge is always the toughest on lifetime. High current is what you get with big DC fast charging sessions or repeated full throttle. The more current you push, the more heat you generate inside the cell. If the cell is cold and you slam it with the high current during charging, you can also get lithium plating, metallic lithium depositing on the surface instead of neatly intercalating into the anode. That's really bad for a lifetime and can be a safety risk in extreme cases. Now, here's the critical thing. Your Ionic 5's BMS and thermal system are designed specifically to keep those three factors inside a safe envelope. It actively heats and cools the pack and reduces the current as you approach high state of charge. And it absolutely will cut power if temperature or voltage go out of range. The car would rather slow down your charging session than let you cook the battery. So the question is not does fast charging damage the battery? The honest answer is every cycle, slow or fast, chips away a tiny bit. The real question is how much extra wear does fast charging add? And when does it become a real problem instead of just theoretical? Compared to a lot of EVs, the Ionic 5 is actually in a pretty good position when it comes to managing stress from DC fast charging. The 800 volt architecture means that for the same power, it can run lower current than a 400 volt EV. Less current for a given power means less resistive heating in the pack and the cables. On top of that, Hyundai's pack has liquid cooling. Coolant runs through channels near the cells and the car uses heat pumps and chillers and radiators to move heat in or out as needed. When you navigate to a charger in a car system, newer software versions can precondition the battery, warming it up in cold weather so that when you arrive at the DC fast charger, the pack is in the right temperature. That dramatically reduces the risk of lithium plating and lets you hit that nice high power plateau rather than a disappointing trickle. But none of this makes your battery immortal. It just means the car is actively fighting to keep the degradation in normal range, even when you fast charge. If you hammer it with DC every single day from low to high state of charge, you're still stacking up more stress than usual. The protections slow the damage they don't erase it. Think of it like your body. You can eat junk food sometimes and your system will cope. Eat junk exclusively for years and you'll feel it. Your Ionic 5 can handle fast charging. The real damage comes from frequency, extremes, and bad timing. Now the honest limit. The Ionic 5 hasn't been on the road for 20 years. We don't have a giant pile of data on cars with half a million kilometers all fast charged daily, but we do have a few things going on for us. First, Hyundai has history. Older models like the original Ionic Electric and Kona Electric built a reputation for pretty low degradation when treated reasonably. People reported less than 10% capacity loss after years of daily use when not abused. Those packs use different chemistries and different designs, but they tell you Hyundai is not clueless about batteries. Second, eGMP platform is shared across multiple models, not just the Ionic 5. That means Hyundai can monitor behavior across a large fleet and push software updates to adjust thermal management, to adjust thermal management and charge curves as they collect more data. They have already done this on some models, tweaking preconditioning and limiting power in certain conditions to protect the pack. Third, warranty language is a clue. Hyundai typically offers eight years or a certain mileage with a minimum capacity guarantee, often around 7%. They're not promising that because they hope you never fast charge. 
they are promising that knowing fast charging is part of the usage pattern, especially in Europe and other markets with dense DC networks. So where's the risk? It's concentrated in smaller groups of drivers. People who use high power DC fast charging as their primary energy source, especially in extreme climates. If you live somewhere very hot, park outside in the sun, drive the pack deep regularly, and DC fast charge from low state of charge to near full most days, you're living in the worst case scenario. If you're more like mostly AC at home or work, DC fast charge a few times a month for road trips or special days, your long-term degradation is likely to be modest and the car's protections are more than enough to keep you safely within the warranty range. Let's talk about the challenge that most people never say out loud. For a lot of Ionic 5 owners, fast charging isn't just a cool feature. It's how they survive. If you live in an apartment or you don't have regular home charging, those ultra fast chargers become your gas stations. That means what engineers would call occasional high stress becomes normal daily life. From a battery's point of view, this is not ideal. You're asking the pack to do a high power refill regularly, often starting from a low state of charge after you have run it down and you might be tempted to push it high because I don't know when I can charge again. Low state of charge plus high current and high state of charge plus high voltage are both more stressful than living in the middle. So your real enemy isn't just fast charging. It's needing fast charging to cover the basics because you don't have another option. This is where habits matter more than tech. Even without a driveway and a small home box, you still have levers to pull. You can decide when you plug in, how high you charge, how low you let the pack go, and whether you let the car precondition when possible. The car system will protect themselves up to a point, but they cannot fix a lifestyle that always pushes everything to extremes. Simple rules to use fast charging without ruining the pack. This is the part you're really here for. You drive an Ionic 5, you like the fast charging, and you want to know how to do it right. So let's turn the chemistry and the theory into normal human rules. First, don't treat fast charging like your default every single day. The Ionic 5 is happiest when the most of its charging is slower AC, whether at home or at work. And fast charging is what you use when you need quick turnaround or you're on a road trip. An occasional DC session barely moves the needle on degradation. Weekly road trip style sessions are fine. Twice a day, DC from 10 to 90% for years will leave a mark. Second, aim to fast charge in the middle of the battery's range, not at extremes. The car already manages this for you to a degree with its taper, but you can help it. If you roll into a charger at something like 10 to 20% and unplug around 70 or 80%, you're living in the less stressful part. You're also spending more time in the high power part of the curve and less time trickling at the top, which is more efficient for our time. Third, avoid fast charging a cold pack whenever you can. In winter, if you can, start navigating to the charger in the car's system before you arrive, so the pack can precondition. Driving for a bit before plugging in is better than fast charging straight from cold overnight park. Cold battery plus high current is where lithium plating is more likely. Fourth, don't leave the car sitting at 100% for hours. If you need a full charge for a long trip, time the charge so you hit high state of charge close to departure. Your Ionic 5 is fine touching 100%, it just doesn't want to live there all the time. And neither do you if you care about the long term health. Finally, remember that the BMS is on your side. If the car cuts charging power or refuses to hit the peak number you have seen in the charts, it's not being lazy, it's protecting itself. Heat, grid limits, charger behavior, and pack preconditioning all play into the curve. Forcing the car to go faster by hopping between charger or chasing a specific peak often isn't worth the stress. Is fast charging your Ionic 5 actually bad long term? If we pull all of this together, the answer is more boring than the internet likes. But it's the truth. Fast charging your Ionic 5 used the way the car was designed for 
regularly driving AC for daily use, DC for trips and convenience is not going to nuke your bathroom in a few years. You will see some extra degradation compared to someone who never touches a DC charger, but it's likely to be a few extra percentage points over a long period, not a catastrophic collapse. On the other hand, if you use ultra DC fast charger as your main fuel pump, hammer it in very hot or very cold conditions and routinely charge from low to almost full, you're going to accelerate there. The car will still try to protect itself, but you can't cheat physics. You'll see faster loss of usable range and more noticeable reductions in fast charge performance as internal resistance creeps up. The good news is you don't have to live in fear. You just need to understand that's going on. So the habits that actually matter become automatic. Aim your fast charging time in that middle band. Let the car manage temperature, keep daily state of charge reasonable when you can, and use the Ionic 5's charging superpower as a tool, not a crutch. If you want to go deeper into what your BMS is doing behind the scenes every time you plug in, click on the BMS course in the description. Thank you.